Welcome back to Life's Chillant. My name is Avital and this week's Parsha is Parsha Yitro. And as one might guess from the name of the Parsha, Parsha Yitro opens up talking about Yitro. Now Yitro was Moses' father-in-law and he was not part of the Jewish people. He was not part of the nation that was enslaved in Egypt and that um, went through the Exodus. But Yitro, the Torah tells us in this week's Parsha, he decides that he's going to join the people join the Jewish people. After hearing about the incredible miracles that God performed for the Jewish people, leading them out of Egypt into the desert, all of the Egyptians drowning at the sea, Yitro decided that it was time to join the Jewish people and to sort of catch up with Moses. And so Yitro joins with Moses and it's a very joyous occasion. And then the next day, Yitro watches as Moses goes out and does what he does on a daily basis. And as I spoke about a few years ago in the, my video, Yitro observes that Moses is really setting himself up on the path to burning out and that it's not a good thing because Moses is spending all day and all night basically judging the people. And so Yitro instructs Moses as he does to appoint sort of um, people under him who are able to judge the less important matters and that only the most important things will come his way. And that's where sort of our Yitro story ends and the rest of the Parsha focuses on the Ten Commandments, which is what I want to talk about today. God instructs Moses, he said, tells Moses to tell the people that they need to prepare for three days because after that time I'm going to descend, God, I'm going to descend on Mount Sinai and um, speak to the people. And so the people do that. They wash their clothes and they, they prepare and they immerse themselves and they are getting ready to receive this great spiritual moment. And the moment finally comes when God speaks the Ten Commandments. And I'm going to review them because that is, again, what I want to talk about. The first commandment, and these, I'm sort of saying the short version of each of the commandments. Each one has more to it. But in essence, the first commandment, I'm the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness and you shall not covet. So those are 10 incredible, incredibly powerful sentiments. And when I was sort of reviewing them and when I was trying to think about what I wanted to talk about, one that stood out to me was the 10th commandment. You shall not covet. Because when we review the other commandments, they really either involve an interaction between two people. They all inter involve, in the sense, an interaction between two beings, man and man or man and God. Because if you think about it, it impacts somebody else if you murder. It impacts somebody else if you commit adultery. It impacts the relationship with God if you believe in other gods. All of those things are experiences that you can cause somebody else to have a reaction. That's not just something that um, is self-contained, but rather something that involves other people directly. But when you look at the commandment of you shall not covet, and I'll read it to you in full now, it says, you shall not covet your fellow's house. You shall not covet your fellow's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, nor anything that belongs to your fellow. The only person really unless you're sort of going outward and expressing it openly that you desire those things, the, the commandment not to covet is something that happens internally. Additionally, it's sort of the only commandment that is requiring us not to feel a certain way. If I'm a kid, right, and my classmate has a great candy bar, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna have the deep desire to steal it. I'm gonna wanna take that candy bar the Torah is not saying don't desire to steal that kid's candy bar. The Torah is saying don't steal it. Draw the line there. But with covet it, coveting something, the Torah is telling us that we shouldn't even have the desire to have our neighbor's house, to have his wife, to have his manservant and maidservant, all the things that belong to our neighbor. We shouldn't have those desires. It's the only one sort of commanding us to control our emotions. And I think that that's a really interesting thing that we can sort of learn something about. In many ways, having the desire to, for something that doesn't belong to us leads to solely unhappiness internally. Because if we want something that we can't have, if we want a portion in life that's not ours, that wasn't destined for us, 
it's only going to lead us to have unhappiness. And it's only going to lead us to desire to do things that are not good for us. So I think that it's a very interesting lesson that the Torah is trying to teach us in the commandments to not even have this emotion in our hearts, to not even have the emotion of coveting other people's things. Because truly, the only person that's going to impact negatively is us. It is, again, the one commandment of the Ten Commandments that is really an internal self-reflection. I think it is teaching us to be happy, again, with what it is that we have, that our neighbor who has maybe a better house, or maybe he has more friends or more animals in this case, but in our case, maybe he has a nicer car. Maybe he has, um, you know, maybe his kids go to a better school. Maybe, maybe our neighbor has just more of an abundance and it's super easy to feel the desire for that. But again, if that was destined for us, then, then we would have it as well. And so I think the, the deeper lesson here is in remembering to be happy with what it is that we have and to come to a place that we are so happy with what we have that we don't even have the emotion of desiring somebody else's life. Because again, we don't know what happens behind that neighbor's door. All we can see is what comes on the outside and it seems beautiful and it seems like this great picture. Today with you know social media and all the influences, all the images that we're receiving constantly, it's so easy to feel this desire for somebody else's life. But the beautiful lesson of this week's Parsha is to find contentment within what we have. And so I wish you all a wonderful week. Shabbat Shalom, and I look forward to speaking with you next time.